Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of Dogs with Devin. My name is Devin, and I'm very excited today to talk about recall and how to teach your dog a perfect or at least a near perfect recall. I'm going to give you five tips, maybe more. That's usually what tends to happen. But let's start with number one, and that is to start by teaching your dog recall inside the house on a leash. I know you're probably thinking, well, I want my dog to be able to listen to me outside and I want them to come when I call them if we're out on a hike or something like that and they're off leash. That's great and that may be the end goal, but in reality, you need to start in a very controlled environment. One of the biggest mistakes that I often see is people want to like just kind of throw their dog into the deep end and think, hey, they'll know how to do this. I've seen other dogs that know how to come when called, uh, but it doesn't really work like that. So you need to start inside and you need to start small. By that, I mean... You have your dog on a leash, you're in control of the environment, there's no distractions, there's no other people, there's no other dogs, there's not crazy loud noises outside if you can help it, and you get them to come to you from like a foot away, and you get that down pat, and then you increase the distance a couple feet, you still have them on the leash, you get to six feet, that's what, you know, the length of most leashes, and then from there, maybe you up the distance, you go to 10 feet away, and you're going to ask yourself, okay, well... How do I go 10 feet away and still be in control with a six foot leash? You don't. You use a long lead. Uh, I've talked about long leads before. Super powerful training tool. You can get them in distances ranging from like 10 feet all the way up to, I think I've seen a hundred foot or a 250 foot long lead, uh, which seems kind, of, seems kind of extreme, but could be helpful. Um, so again, you just increase that distance. And that's, so that moves us to step number two, and that's using a long lead. So oftentimes when people feel like their dog has the recall down inside the house, they want to step it up and they want to move outside, which is a whole different world for our dogs. We need to understand that, right? They, you know, inside they're used to it. They're there probably every single day. They know the smells, the sounds, they know the people who are always there, all that good stuff. But when they go outside, it's a whole new world. And yes, I just thought of the Aladdin song in my head. I'm not going to sing it, but you're probably thinking of it too, and that's okay. And so it's a whole new world for our dogs. They There's new smells, there's new sounds, there's so many things going on. And we have to understand that, you know, sometimes when you take them outside and you're going to start a training session, you need to just let them kind of sniff around and let them get used to things, let them get acclimated before you really dive into training. Um so yeah, using a long lead when you're outside is going to be super important. Even if you're in a controlled environment like a fenced in yard or, or a park with a fence or something like that, you want to keep them on the long lead as you're teaching this recall. And here's why. Every time that you ask your dog to come to you and they don't, you are in essence allowing them to kind of believe that they don't have to come to you. And it's it, it starts to create a bad habit uh, and your, your dog starts to believe, hey, I don't, I don't have to come to my pup parent, nothing really bad happened. So why do I need to? And so that's why if you have them on a long lead, even if you're 15 feet away from them outside, you ask them to come to you and they, you know, see a squirrel or whatever, and they want to dart after it. You have the long lead in your hand. And so you're in control of them. You're in control of the situation, even though you have a distance between you. And so then in that sense, you can kind of reel them in. I'm not saying you want to force them in or yank them or anything like that, just because that's not really going to teach them. But you have the ability to kind of keep them in your hands per se uh, without being right next to them. And that's super important. So using a long lead is going to pay huge dividends and, and mostly because you're not going to end up teaching your dog any bad habits um, along the way. Uh, another tip here is to always reward your dog when they come to you. And this is one of those ones, you know, this is a behavior where there are going to be a lot of instances where naturally your dog comes to you and naturally, even when you're not asking, they're going to, they're going to come towards you or whatever it may be. So in the beginning as you're in, you know, the first, honestly, six months to a year, every time your dog comes to you, whether you ask them to, or whether you don't, you should be rewarding that you should be giving your cue word, like the yes or the good, or if you're using a clicker, that type of thing, and, and kind of letting them know this is a behavior that I want and giving them a reward. And that's where, you know, always having treats handy, um, especially obviously when you're outside and doing training, those type of things, types of things. But even inside the house, having, you know, room temperature treats around that you can grab and, and always be ready to reward your dog, because that's really what, what you're trying to do as you're training your dog is you're trying to create as many positive, 
repetitions as possible. You're trying to reinforce the positive as many times as you can because every time you do it, you're kind of chiseling away at, at, the, at your dog's understanding and, and helping reaffirm, yes, this is what I want you to do. This is good. This is what uh, I'm asking of you. So always, always reward it. You know, don't, especially with, with recall, I don't think you can go overkill with this. Honestly, if I'm outside and I'm practicing like a difficult recall with my dogs, I like to give them, you know, a couple treats each time or, or you know, a couple treats and, you know, a little pat on the head or whatever, or, you know, a, a quick game of tug, whatever it might be to make that experience as high quality as possible so that they know that coming back to you is going to be a super positive experience every single time. Uh, which leads me to kind of another thought within this one, uh, within the, you know, rewarding every time they do come. If you call your dog, you say, hey, buddy, come here or buddy, come however you want to say it. And they don't come and then you're yelling at their name or something like that. And then they come back to you and then you get mad at them or you scold them or, you know, you do something negative. That's really not a good decision because if you ask them to come to you, even if they don't come right in the beginning, but eventually they come. And then when they do come to you, you get angry. They're going to start thinking, why would I come to them? I, dogs are, I think are smarter than we give them credit for, but at the same time, like their level of like knowledge is pretty basic, right? Like it's, Hey, if I, if I do this behavior and something bad happens, I don't want to keep doing that. So if the behavior is coming to you, and the reaction or the result is them getting in trouble or them getting scolded or them getting put on a leash right away and, and automatically taken away from a fun situation, it's going to start creating a negative experience and they're going to be smart enough to say, oh, I don't want to come to them. So make sure that you don't associate, you know, calling your dog's name or calling them towards you to like scold them or get mad at them or something because really nothing positive is going to come from that. So super important tip. Um, Fourth tip, I'm just checking some notes here to make sure I get all the good details. Um, the fourth idea here is to set up difficult situations. Bef- Ugh, I just said situations really weird. Uh, set up difficult situations before they happen. So what I mean by that is in most instances where people really want recall to be strong, it's like if there's a distraction that runs by or if they're, um, you know, maybe playing around a dog that you feel unsafe with and you want to get them to you quickly, you know, situations like that that are kind of more, I don't know, important, I guess you could say, or, or, um, valuable, uh, for you as a pup parent, um, you need to set up those situations beforehand. So if you want your dog to know how to come back to you, when you call them, when they're playing with other dogs, you need to practice that situation beforehand. So again, create the same kind of baby steps that we did earlier. So don't think you're just going to be able to pull this off at, you know, like a dog meetup or something like that right away practice this situation in your house, have your dog maybe on a leash um, and have, you know, whether it's a neighbor or a friend, bring their dog over, let them play and then practice being able to ask your dog to come to you. They come to you, you give them a reward and you let them go back to playing. And then you, you know, you increase the difficulty little by little, uh, even with these kind of real life situations that you are trying to set up. And, and this kind of leads into tip number five, the last tip, which is, you know, don't, when you think your dog has a behavior down perfectly, especially with recall, keep training it. You know, don't think that it is perfect yet because odds are you may have had a few moments of success or a few instances where they did ask what you, or they did what you asked of them, but don't think that it's perfect and don't think that you should stop training it. Especially with recall, I would say if you feel like it's getting really, really good, that is the perfect time to just keep training it consistently for another couple weeks or months or years, honestly, uh, you know, with any behavior, but especially recall, it's one you should be brushing up on frequently and for ex- basically your entire dog's life. Uh, and that, it, and on, on top of that, in regards to, you know, trying to set up the situations beforehand and, and, you know, continuing to practice, it's don't expect that, you know, okay, I practiced where my dog was, or I threw a ball and then I got my dog to come back to me in my backyard, which is great. That's, it's a great moment of success, but don't expect that that's going to mean if a squirrel goes running by or a cat, they are going to know how to come back to you or they're going to, you know, have that behavior down well enough to come back. Essentially, if you can try and create those experiences in a controlled 
controlled environment or a controlled way when you're kind of preemptively setting it up, that's when you're going to find the most success. If you can, you know, go somewhere that, you know, cats are going to run by or something and have your dog on a leash and have a cat walk by. And again, maybe you use a neighbor or something like that, have a cat walk by and, and practice that recall. So it's a matter of, you know, trying to set up as many real life situations before they happen so that you've taught your dog, okay, this is what's, you know, this is what's happening. There's a crazy thing. There's a loud noise. There's someone running by something running by, but they understand because you've taught them that exact thing. So, you know, those five tips right there, I guarantee you, if you practice those and implemented those frequently and consistently, you will see great results with your recall. And I'll just recap those real fast. So number one is to Number one, start inside on a leash, start small. Don't ask too much of your dog in the beginning. Keep it simple. Number two is even in the house, but definitely when you move outside, implement the use of a long lead. It's just going to help you stay in control, which means you will set up more successes and not set up failures for your dog. Uh, Tip number three is to treat slash reward the behavior every single time that it happens, especially in the beginning months slash years of training always reward just because it is such an important and difficult behavior for a lot of dogs. So always, always, always reward it. So it becomes, it becomes a very positive experience. Tip number four is to set up difficult situations before they happen. And it kind of coincides with tip number five, which is to not give your dog too much trust, uh, as, as mean or whatever, as that may sound, just don't think that your dog has it down perfectly yet. Continue to train it, continue to practice it, continue to try and set up as many real life situations as you can. And I guarantee you will see an improvement in your dog's recall. And it is important for their safety, for your well being, for your happiness, because nothing is more frustrating than when, I don't know, maybe your dog slips out the door or you're in a situation where you think there might be something dangerous about to happen and you ask your dog to come to you and they don't. It's super frustrating. We've all been there. And that's why practicing this consistently is going to be so, so, so important for you. So those are our tips for today's episode. If you're listening via podcast, make sure to head over to the YouTube channel and subscribe there and vice versa, uh, just because it's a you know, it's nice to get it in a different medium from time to time. And wherever you are watching slash listening, please subscribe. It is super important to me that you subscribe because I'm going to continue to keep coming out with tips to help you be a better pup parent and just help you have a better relationship with your dog because that's what it's all about. So subscribe, leave a review, leave a comment, whatever it may be, share it with a friend. I know that they will and be glad that you did. I almost didn't know what to say there. They'll be enjoying it. They'll be happy, whatever. They'll, they'll be happy that uh, they're getting more tips on how to become a better pup parent. And I always say this and I mean it. You can always email me dogs with Devin. That's D E V I N at gmail.com. You can DM me on Instagram. You can leave a comment on YouTube. You can message on Facebook, you know, all those regular things that you can do. I am here. I'm happy to answer questions and have a conversation with you and hopefully help you become a better pup parent. But those are the tips for today. And above all, just go out and love your dog. Thanks for listening. See you guys.